Hey everyone, I'm so excited. It's real. It exists. Here, ESP32 S3. I've actually got one in my hands, finally. It's my only one. It's a development kit board, early preview. Please folks, don't go looking for one. They don't exist anywhere yet. You can't buy them. You can't get them. They're not even in production. This is an early, early sample, but I've got one. I'm going to give you a look at it and talk to you about the awesome new specs on the SP32 S3. Let's get going. Okay, let's have a talk about the ESP32 S3 specs. I'm going to compare it against the S2 and the current dual-core ESP32 that's on the market at the moment. Cores, we've now got two extensor LX7 32-bit cores instead of the one on the S2, but we're also going to get two ultra-low-power coprocessors. The first one, a RISC-V coprocessor like on the S2, but the second one looks like it's going to be a full state machine coprocessor. That's super exciting, especially with all the buzz around the RP2040 right now. Speed, the usual 240 megahertz on each core. Memory, slightly different configuration again. We've now got 512 kilobytes of SRAM, 384K of ROM, the usual 16 kilobytes of RTC memory. External RAM and flash support is now SPI, dual SPI, quad SPI, Octal SPI, QPI, and OPI. So a much more extensive range of flash and RAM that can be supported. Now something that's interesting about the 512 kilobytes of SRAM is it's now in one partition. You can access the whole 512 kilobytes of SRAM, where on the current dual-core ESP32, you had 520K of SRAM, but it was partitioned for different purposes. And so you never got full access to the whole amount of SRAM. Peripherals, well, I almost ran out of space. 44 programmable I.O., up 1 from the S2, but up 10 from the ESP32. 14 cap touch, 4 SPI, 2 I2C, 2 I2S, 3 UARTs, up from the 2 on the S2. 2 DACs, 2 ADCs, 20 channel. Sorry folks, they're the same ADCs that we're used to on the ESP32. No improvement there from my understanding. 4 RMT channels. It's got TWAI, which is basically CAN bus. LED PWM, up to 8 channels. Two SDIO host interfaces, a DMA controller with five channels up and five channels down. That is nuts. LCD interface, including now YUV support as well as RGB. Full speed on the go USB and the camera interface. Finally, with connectivity, we've got Wi Fi 4 still, it's 2.4 gigahertz, including the time of flight. And now Bluetooth comes back with Bluetooth 5 with classic BLE and Bluetooth mesh. Now they're currently stating 5.0. I don't know if it will be 5.0 or 5.1 or 5.2. Time will tell. We'll have to wait till the actual silicon ships. But it's a really impressive set of features and peripherals and has absolutely raised the bar on what you can expect from Espressive. It's very exciting. So let's have a look at the board that I received. It's a pretty stock standard looking Espressive development kit. Many of you will be used to the look of it by now. I should just quickly note that mine arrived with the reset button broken inside the package that it came in. It also came with some bits of a button. <laughs> so I haven't tried to put it back together again yet. Thankfully, I don't think I need to use the buttons because it's got an auto reset circuit over here. So I should be able to just flash the board and use it without needing the button. The membrane for the button is actually still there so I can push it down if I need to. I might try to see if I can put the button back together again. It's not the end of the world. The board itself has the module on the left, pretty similar to the way all of their boards are now, and all of the circuitry on the side, voltage regulator and an onboard CP2102 as a serial UART. It's got an onboard RGB LED, but there's no other onboard LEDs at all to flash. There is a little power LED just over there. What's interesting about this module is that it's actually got 8 megabytes of PS RAM on it and 8 megabytes of flash. I don't know if they're going to actually release a module in this configuration or not, but that's pretty cool. Now the chip itself just looks like a standard ESP32 chip. It's a QFN56 and it's the same pitch as the ESP32 S2. But just for clarification now, because many of you have asked, it is not a drop-in replacement for the S2. You cannot lift an S2 off and put an S3 on. In fact, you'll probably damage it by doing that. On the back, we can see ESP32 S2. I don't know what the ADAX-1 is, that could be a code name, I'm not sure. Sometimes Espresso put code names on their products. I should also note that it doesn't actually mention S3 on the chip at all. 
So let's plug this in and have a bit of a play with the IDF and see if we can get it to do anything. Now remember, there's obviously no Arduino support at all right now for this. There's no MicroPython, there's no CircuitPython, because there's just no silicon around. But there is some early preview IDF support. So we'll see if we can boot this up and make it at least do a hello world or maybe even blink an LED. Okay, I've got a terminal window open. I've got the ESP IDF installed. And if I do git status, you'll see that I'm on master. It's ready to go. I've also got the S3 connected to a breadboard over here. It's plugged in and the reason I've got it on the breadboard is I want to do the blink example and because there's no onboard LED to blink you need to plug in an external one so I've got a little blue LED here and a resistor so I'll plug those in in a moment but I need to make sure that I've got my environment set up correctly okay I do this is not going to be a tutorial on how to use the IDF folks just letting you know I'm going to go into CD examples, getting started, blink. I'm going to do a idf.py clean. So before I do anything, I need to actually set the target for the S3. So I need to do an idf.py. Now normally you do at this point a set target, but no, I need to actually do a dash dash preview. Then I need to do a set target ESP32 S3. And that's going to go through and reconfigure the project to use all of the S3 components. So I should now be able to do an IDF.py flash. Actually, no, I can't because I need to tell her what port I'm on. By default, it's going to look for a different port name. dev slash tty.sl. Why is it not picking it up? Right, because it does not like doing an autocomplete with the IDF there. So, for slash dev slash tty.sl. Right, that's what I want. When I hit tab, it doesn't autocomplete. So, copy that. Whoops, there I go df.py minus p and we're going to do a flash and a monitor so we get serial output afterwards. It's now going to build. Now the blink sketch is using GPIO 5 to flash the LED. Flashing. Okay, cool. So I'm just going to stop this for a second. So it thinks it's turning an LED on and off but there's no LED there, but I wanted to show you was, so it's booting, SP ROM is the SP32 S3. Uh, there's no RNG support yet for the S3. So SPI flash, two megabytes. I don't think it is though. And let's scroll down. Yeah, so it says here, uh, SPI flash, it detected a size of eight megabytes larger than the size in the binary image header, the two megabytes, but it's going to use what it was told it was anyway. So it's only using two megabytes of the eight megabyte flash. And as you can see, there's no PS RAM or anything set up on here. So we should enable all of that. I'll do that on the Hello World sketch. But it thinks it's flashing something on GPO 5. So let's plug the LED in. It's going to be tricky because so five is just here and there's a ground just there but I can't plug it in directly obviously because I'll blow the LED so I'm going to need to stretch this, these pins out to make this reach away from the other pins and this LED, uh, this resistor which I'm pretty sure is too large it's probably a 10k that's okay we'll still see it flashing we'll go between ground and that pin. Oh, there we go. If I plug it in correctly. And it's now flashing. Yay! So, it's working, it's flashing. Let's have a look at the Hello World code, because I believe that dumps out memory and stuff. So, cd dot dot, that's blink. Um, hello World. 
and I'm going to have to also do a set target. So by default, all of the projects are, are not set up for the S3. And then I'm going to do a menu config. I'm going to have to turn some things on and play around with some stuff. So menu config. Okay, so as you can see, ESP32 S3 beta version. Um, I want to first go to the serial flasher and tell it that it's got 8 meg, because that's what it thinks it's got. It was using 2 because that's what it was set to. And I want to go to the component config to ESP S3 specific. And I want to turn on SPI RAM. Configuration. Auto detect is fine. I'll just tell it it's that because that's what it is. Uh, initialize this program during setup. Yep. And I want to tell it to be my. So right now it's set. You need to use malloc to use it, but I'm going to actually tell it to be the heap. So it's going to use the heap caps. And so that should give us the whole heap. The whole amount of memory should be that 8 megabytes of PS RAM. Okay, it's good. And I want to now save it. Yes. And now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do a, a build, like a flash and monitor. Now this doesn't do anything exciting. But it should show us the amount of RAM and the correct flash and the obviously LED will finish flashing okay there we go and it's just going to do a countdown and stop I'll just um, stop that otherwise we'll keep going past so let's go back and have a look so it now recognizes it's got 8 megabytes of flash which is great and if we come down it should here we go found 64 megabit of SPI RAM this way RAM mode is 40. Okay, probably could have made that 80. And it's been initialized. And now if we go all the way down, here we go. This is an ESP32 S3 chip with two CPU cores, Wi-Fi, Silicon Revision 0, 8 megabytes of external flash, and minimum free heap size is 8 megabytes approximately. How cool is that? So it's working. Flash and RAM. I mean, you know, I don't know what else you really do with the board right now without having any other development environments for it. But there it is, ESP32 S3, it does exist. And I will be building hardware around it and I cannot wait. Well, I have to wait because silicon is many, many, many months away still, but at least I can start playing. That's it folks. Thank you for watching, I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe to the channel to be notified when I've got more videos coming out, including more stuff on the S3. To all my patrons, you're awesome. Thank you so much. Till next time, catch you later. Bye.